Hello, good day to you. Welcome back to another chapter on this channel. In this video, we'll be talking about heredity, that is the study of passing off traits and characteristics to the offsprings. I'm sure by now you have observed that when animals, when they reproduce, their offspring look like their parents. And some of you will adopt certain traits that your parents may have. You may have your mother's eyes, your father's nose, and so on and so forth. You get the drift. One of the great contributors of the past in this discipline of studying heredity will be Gregor Mendel. You can read more about him in his works elsewhere. I won't be covering too much in this video. In Gis, he planted many, many plants and observed their patterns and counted them. And through his findings, he was able to derive a certain pattern that was reproducible, which gives rise to our understanding of inheritance. In the O-level syllabus, you will be required to understand mono-hybrid inheritance. Mono means one. Hybrid means a trait, a differing trait, and inheritance means the passing of these traits from one generation to another. So long story short, it is talking about how parents pass on their traits to their offspring and the probabilities that each trait may be expressed. For example, in Gregor Mendel's experiments, the tall plants versus the dwarf plants. And through Gregor Mendel's work, Long story short, hereditary factors are passed to offspring via genes, which are the genetic sequences that control certain characteristics. And these characteristics come as a pair known as alleles, different forms of genes controlling the same trait. For example, tall plants, the tall plant gene and the dwarf plant genes. Also, he concluded that the law of segregation means the law of segregation will happen during the plant crossing process to separate the alleles so that one gamete will contain only one factor. The fertilization of gametes from the maternal parent and the paternal parent will further determine what genes the offspring will carry, therefore affecting the outward expression that the offspring will have. Also, these gametes will unite and be fertilized on a randomized event, therefore these characteristics can be predicted systematically, which we will be talking further in the later part of this video. So for plants or even in insects, when such experiments are being carried out on them, numerous numerous offspring can be produced. And as mentioned earlier, gametes fuse in a randomized event. As such, with a large sample size, the statistics will tend to veer towards the expected ratio which can be calculated that you will learn in the later part of this video. However, why in certain scenarios the observed ratio differs from the expected ratio? Usually that will be the case in humans where the number of offspring is little. The observed ratio may not reflect the expected ratio because the sample size is small. These ratio figures are calculated due to chance and probabilities of gamete fusion. Therefore, with small sample size, small number of offspring, it is difficult to mathematically reach the expected ratio of traits in the offspring. And so, before we move on further, we will be covering through some basic vocabulary that we will further use to maneuver in this chapter. A chromosome is a condensed form of a chromatin that can be viewed under microscope that is the heavily folded form of DNA strand, where they are preparing for cell division. A gene is a sequence of DNA that controls a certain trait. It is usually found on the same locus. Locus means location on a chromosome of a specific number. Note that in humans we have 23 pairs of chromosomes and each one of them carries certain genes that control certain traits. Alleles. Alleles are different forms of the same gene occupying the same locus, location. So for example, the gene carrying the tall plant and the gene carrying the gene carrying the sequence encoding for the growth of a tall plant and the gene encoding for the sequence which results in a dwarf plant. So talking about alleles, like in Mendel's experiments, there is an interest in dominant alleles and recessive alleles. Dominant alleles will express its traits 
with only one copy in the offspring. However, in recessive alleles, you need two copies to express itself in the offspring. And the outward expression of these traits will be called the phenotype. So for example, in the short plan, the phenotype of having two dwarf alleles will be the short plan. And the genotype, which is the genetic makeup that controls this expression, will be small t and small t. In this case, it is called a homozygous recessive. Homo means the same. What if it is heterozygous, big T and small t? If a genotype for plant is big T and small t, the phenotype, the outward expression, will be tall plant because there is one dominant allele. Dominant allele will express itself with one copy. So these are some basic outcomes of the plants with big T and small t and the phenotype that follows. Since we are talking about two copies of alleles, they must be one copy of allele on each homologous chromosomes. Homo means the same. Logus means something like an analog, means their partner. In the human chromosomes mentioned earlier, there are 23 pairs, each of them numbered. So if the gene carrying the sequence to code for tall plants is on chromosome number one, the other allele will be on the same chromosome number one and on the same locus. Homologous chromosomes exist in pairs, one from the paternal parent and one from the maternal parent. Next, we'll be talking about genetic diagrams. This is a little bit complicated, so pay attention. I will go through a little bit slower. So first on this side, usually I will write the acronym and these are the respective words that represent this acronym. And using Gregor Mendel's experiment on plants, on tall and dwarf plants as an example, taking the homozygous dominant, purebred or we call it wild type sometimes, homozygous dominant for tall plants and homozygous recessive for dwarf plants. And note that in genetic diagrams there are three generations. So you start off with the grandparent generation, so you cross them, due to law of segregation, the alleles separate, and in fertilization event, you will get big T and small t. F1 generation phenotypes will all be heterozygous. Phenotype will all be tall because of the dominant allele. You self-cross them. This is the parent generation. Now with law of segregation again in meiosis, these are the alleles formed, and there you can do the cross multiplication method, like in mathematics, you will get these genotypes and these phenotypes in this ratio. This is how you do a genetic diagram. Takes some getting used to, it is actually quite straightforward. And taking note of the parent generation to child generation, a simple method could be used to quickly illustrate what is the ratio and outcomes of these crosses. First, you draw a 9 compartment box, fill in the header and the column, and using the heterozygous parents, under law of segregation, the these will be the alleles in the gametes, and these will be the final crossed outcomes. This will be the Punnett square, it's fast and simple to visualize. Now, with this knowledge, we can determine a unknown genotype of a plant or an insect, especially when they are able to, they have short lifespan or they are able to produce a large amount of offspring to have a more accurate sample size for the study. We can determine genotype by doing a maneuver called a test cross and we test it with a known genotype using the homozygous recessive. Why recessive? Because if there is any dominant trait in the unknown subject, it will be quickly expressed with one allele. So these are some examples that can be used in test cross. So using similar genetic diagram, if all the offspring phenotype is tall, we can conclude that the unknown genotype of the subject will be homozygous dominant for the tall allele. If it is ratio of one tall and one dwarf, we can conclude that the unknown subject has a heterozygous genotype having one tall plant allele and one dwarf plant allele. Alright, next, 
hopefully that was not too much of mental load. We go on to the idea of co-dominance. Earlier we talked about mainly about the height of plants. If you have one big T allele, you will be expressed as a tall plant. However, there, there is such a idea, a concept called the co-dominance. Co-dominance, two dominant allele that is dominant and they encode for different phenotype. If they come together, they will be co-expressed, means they will be expressed together in the offspring. And a common example will be the blood group in humans, which there are also multiple alleles that encode for the blood group of humans. We have the A, the B, the AB, and the O. So you can see that the allele for A encoding for as IA and B as IB. And for blood group AB, where you need to take note of, this is co-dominance coming to play. The blood group will be IA and IB. For blood group O, it is homozygous recessive will be IO and IO. And therefore, blood group A and B can also be IAIO and IBIO. Or gender determination in humans or animals is not as it's not exactly a allele that is coming to place a whole chromosome. The chromosome combination to encode for females will be XX and for male will be XY. Exactly. Actually, the Y chromosome is like an X, just that two of these chromosome tails are much shorter. So it looks like a Y. So as males are of XY, the gametes, the sperm cells, will carry either X or a Y. And for females, genotype will be XX. The X will all be of, will be carrying the X chromosome. And so you do a test cross or a, you do a genetic diagram or a Punnett square, you can see that the ratio for having, the expected ratio for having males or female will be equal at 1 is to 1. In test papers, they like to ask, oh, in one gamete, there is a 22 chromosome and one Y coming from a certain parent and the other gamete will have another 22 chromosomes and the X and the sex chromosome is an X which is also known as the 23rd one, the 23rd chromosome. You need to be sharp to be able to identify that only the male parent will be able to contribute the Y chromosome. And if any, any gamete that is carrying 23 chromosomes and an additional sex chromosome, X or Y, you must be alert that this offspring may be one with Down syndrome, which is three copies of chromosome 21, which will cover later in detail. And with the discussion of many genes and traits coming to place and the variation that can happen in offsprings, the different types of variation can be classed as continuous and discontinuous. And discontinuous variation, usually the differences are clear cut. It's either this or that, things like seeds, yellow or green. It's usually controlled by few genes and they don't have any additional effect. That's why the variation do not continue to vary. However, for continuous variation will be things like height, weight, intelligence, things like that. It's controlled by a large number of genes. They have an additive effect. Different genes can add on and they can be affected by the environment. Since now we know that genes control the outcome of the phenotype in the offspring, we can further appreciate that if something happens to the genetic sequence, there's going to be problem in the offspring in this particular trait. For example, albinism that produces an albino individual recessive gene mutation. If the offspring is homozygous for this allele, then this individual will turn out to be an albino. Sickle cell anemia is also another example where one of the nucleotide, recall this chapter, link in the top right corner, is swapped with another one, which you do not need to know in detail. The hemoglobin produced may have one amino acid in its protein that is different. And this causes all the hemoglobin to be able to clump in one straight line or multiple like Lego, therefore altering the biconcave shape of the red blood cell. This of course will have effects like these and it is fatal. We mentioned about this syndrome called the Down syndrome where, a, where an individual receives three copies of chromosome 21 which means one of the copy, one of the gamete that was fused underwent a non-disjunction, means the 
chromosome did not separate during meiosis and went into one gamete. And this two, chromosome 21, in one gamete will fuse with another gamete that has its own one copy of chromosome 21 will give the offspring three copies of chromosome 21. This will result in the individual developing Down syndrome. And of course, certain agents, certain environmental factors can also contribute to mutation. Things like these are mutagenic. They can cause a nucleotide to be swapped out or damaged or all kinds of reasons of which the effects are not desirable. However, mutation is not all negative. It plays a part in selection and evolution. So in a, for example, in a population of organisms, and due to mutation, some of them will carry certain abilities that enables them to survive better in certain environments. They will be they will live long enough to be able to reproduce to carry on this gene in their offspring. Their offspring will also be able to survive better in the given situation. Therefore, the nature or the environment selects for these kind of traits. This is also known as evolution. And of course, the person that contributes greatly to this observation will be Charles Darwin and the Galapagos finches. Ancestral finches will have a large variety of mutations and they and these offspring will grow to have different kinds of bodily adaptations. They, they will occupy different niche, means they live in different places, they eat different kind of food, so on and so forth. And therefore, these traits will radiate outward to a large number of different characteristics. This is called adaptive radiation. And of course, with natural selection, there's also artificial selection where humans mainly are the ones who are behind it will execute this type of breeding called selective breeding where the organism of choice will be selected for their traits for example plants or animals in the farm that produces the greatest commodity will be selected to pass on these genes in hopes that the offspring will be able to do the same and that is all for today Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like and subscribe. Share it with somebody that needs to see this. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.